So this story, like I said, comes after Jesus has fed the 5,000 plus the women who, of course, weren't counted in that count and the other people who were there with a few fish and some bread from a little boy who I'm thinking his mother said, don't forget your lunch. And that's what they used to fill all of those people. And after that miracle, the disciples left in a boat without Jesus, who later walked on water and joined the disciples. He scared them a little bit doing that, but the disciples witnessed these two miracles within a few hours of each other. Miracles that are pretty much lost on the crowd that is following him. What the lectionary texts do not include in this little, is this little ditty that John writes that kind of gives us a bridge between that story and this one. The crowd saw the disciples leave without Jesus. But in the morning, they saw that the second boat was still there. So they looked around for him and never found him. So then they decided that they better cross the sea and go look for him on the other side in Capernaum. They don't know what has taken place during the night in order to get him there, caught up with the disciples. Basically, from what they could tell, he had just kind of disappeared. And this part of the story always makes me laugh. So I have this teenager who's with me today, who ever since he was a little boy would disappear like that. You'd be at the mall, you'd be at some event, some festival, just the grocery store, wherever. You turn around, he was gone. You have kids like that? And you look and look for them, and then you find them looking at something, and I would say to him, how long have you been here? And this is what the crowd says to Jesus. Rabbi, when did you get here? But Jesus knows what is going on. He knows what they are really asking. You see, this crowd has followed Jesus to a new location on the other side of the sea. These people want more bread, but they want more of Jesus' bread. It's the cool kind with something different in it. They are still struggling with what happened the day before when they were fed fish and bread. There they called him a prophet and were about to take him by force and make him a king. And they aren't quite sure what happened during the night when Jesus disappeared. Their understanding of who Jesus is is about to be stretched yet again. The crowd has seen something in Jesus they haven't seen before in anyone else, anywhere. But they aren't sure what it means or what it is exactly. They are attracted to him. They want to follow him. But they think it's because he serves this yummy bread. We see these people around the church. They come in because we offer VBS or they take advantage of the free meals we serve, or parents' day out, or our community garden, or whatever it might be that individual churches offer. Do you know these people? Do you know who I'm talking about? Jesus did. He understood that there are people who get just a glimpse of the gospel, just an idea of what we do here, and why we gather on Sunday mornings and they want to know more. They might be feeling the need to be closer to the church, to us, feeling the nudge of the spirit to check us out and see what this is all about. We feed them and show our joy in doing so, and they wonder why feeding them makes us happy. We entertain their children and laugh all the way through vacation Bible school. And they wonder what is so fun about hanging around with a bunch of active kids and teaching them stories. They see us come together in Jesus' name on Sundays, and we leave here both empty from worship and refilled with the Spirit. And they wonder what the heck we do here together. Do you know the people I'm talking about? Jesus does. These people have a lot of questions. 
Sometimes they ask us and sometimes they look on our website and sometimes they call the church office. Maybe they ask about our feeding programs. Maybe they ask us these questions at our musical events. How long have you been here? Where should I park? What kinds of things do you do? Will you help me with my hurts? Will you listen to my story? Will you accept me as I am? They are seekers who've had a taste of the gospel and who are now hungry for more. They're hungry, but they may not even know what it is they're hungry for. When they come our way, how do we receive them? How do we answer them? What do we feed them? Because they need more than food. Are we prepared to give them more? When the people see Jesus, they think they're asking for the basics. Food is a basic necessity. Jesus understands that they're missing more from their lives. Do you know the people I'm talking about? Jesus does. He matter-of-factly tells them, bread isn't what you're looking for. He doesn't shame them. He understands that we think we know what we need. But he understands that we need more. Jesus meets them where they are and gives them more than what they'd hoped for. Can you do this? Y'all have a new pastor coming. What are your plans for welcoming her? For making sure that she knows that you are excited about her being here. Those first few days will set the stage for your relationship with her. I ask this question because, trust me, I know congregations who have worked so very hard to find just the right person, the person that they need, and then when the person gets into town, they abandon them. Nobody shows them around town. Nobody shows them around the church. Nobody makes sure that they have keys. Nobody shows them how to work the copy machine. It's like the job has ended once you've called her. But that's not how you want this to start. And on top of that, a new pastor is going to create interest in the community. Are you prepared for the people who are going to come out of curiosity to see who she is? Do you know the people I'm talking about? Jesus does. Are you prepared to tell them that Jesus wants to do more for them than they can, than they can ask or imagine? Are you prepared to show them that they are the beloved child of God and to love them in Jesus' name. I encourage you to get your boats together and break bread and talk about what is going to happen here in the coming months. What nourishment are you going to offer people? Because they don't know what it is that they are seeking. They don't know about grace, about loving, about being accepted about the forgiving grace offered by God. And it's not a bad thing for us to be reminded of that either. Jesus tells the crowd they don't have to do anything. Just believe. That can be a tough one for us in the church. New people come in and we look them over. What committee can they serve on? What job can they fill? We forget that they aren't here for us. We forget that they aren't here to fulfill our need. They are here because they are seeking bread, that special bread that Jesus offers, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Are we prepared to give it to them? Amen.